This is a video in clinical medicine from the New England Journal of Medicine. Pneumothorax refers to the presence of air in the pleural cavity. Primary spontaneous pneumothorax may occur in an apparently healthy person who has no other signs or symptoms of a disease process that may have caused the pneumothorax. Observation and oxygen therapy may be the only treatments that are necessary for patients who have small, primary, spontaneous pneumothorax. However, for patients with pneumothorax and clinically significant breathlessness, active intervention is required. This may include needle aspiration or the placement of a chest tube. This video reviews the techniques and equipment required to perform needle aspiration of primary spontaneous pneumothorax in adults. Ultrasonography can be helpful in confirming the presence of pneumothorax, in locating the landmarks for catheter insertion, and in determining the depth of catheter insertion. Since local practices and equipment availability vary greatly, ultrasound-guided insertion will not be addressed in this video. Needle aspiration is appropriate for patients with their first episode of primary spontaneous pneumothorax. These patients should have no evidence of underlying lung disease and should either exhibit breathlessness or have a pneumothorax consisting of a rim of air of more than 2 cm measured at the level of the hilum. Needle aspiration is contraindicated when a patient has traumatic pneumothorax or when tension pneumothorax is suspected. Hemodynamic instability also constitutes a contraindication. You should also avoid using needle aspiration in patients with underlying pulmonary disease, a history of recurrent pneumothorax, bilateral pneumothorax, or a bleeding disorder. Numerous devices can be used to perform needle aspiration. You should be familiar with the specific devices available at your institution. In this video, we will use an intravenous over-the-needle catheter to demonstrate the procedure. Begin by gathering the necessary equipment. The equipment needed for aspiration includes a 16-gauge or 18-gauge over-the-needle catheter, tubing with a three-way stopcock, and a 50 milliliter or 60 milliliter syringe. To administer local anesthesia, you will need 1% or 2% lidocaine, a 10 milliliter syringe, and 22 gauge and 25 gauge needles. You will also need sterile gloves, a protective or sterile gown, a face mask, chlorhexidine or another antiseptic solution, a sterile preparation kit, and a sterile drape. Explain the procedure to the patient and obtain written informed consent. Confirm the patient's identity, the indication for needle aspiration, and the absence of contraindications. Confirm that the patient has no allergy to lidocaine and verify whether the pneumothorax is on the right side or the left side. Place the patient in a semi-supine position with the torso at a 30 to 45 degree angle to allow the air to collect at the apex of the lung. Administer oxygen and monitor the patient for pulse oximetry, heart rate and blood pressure. An intravenous catheter should also be in place. Finally, provide the patient with a face mask. Rub your hands with an alcohol-based formulation and then examine the patient to determine the location of landmarks for the procedure. The preferred location for placement of a needle for aspiration of pneumothorax is the second intercostal space in the midclavicular line on the side with the pneumothorax. Begin by locating the second and third ribs. The second rib is the first palpable rib that can be felt just below the collarbone. Then locate the third rib. The second intercostal space is the area between the second and third ribs. 
Next, identify the middle of the clavicle and the mid-clavicular line. The intersection of the mid-clavicular line and the second intercostal space is the correct place to insert the needle for aspiration of pneumothorax. It can be helpful to mark the needle insertion site with a skin marking pen. Use a checklist to make sure that all the necessary equipment and supplies are ready for use and within easy reach. Put on a face mask, a protective or sterile gown and sterile gloves. Use chlorhexidine or another antiseptic solution to clean the patient's skin in the area where the aspiration will be performed and position the sterile drape. Aspirate lidocaine into the 10 ml syringe for use as a local anesthetic agent. Using a 25 gauge needle, inject a wheel of lidocaine at the superior edge of the third rib at the mid-clavicular line. Switch to a 22 gauge needle and anesthetize the deeper layers of tissue by inserting the needle at an angle perpendicular to the skin. Before injecting the anesthetic, always aspirate the site to make sure the needle has not entered a blood vessel. Progress with the needle just over the top of the third rib through the intercostal muscles in the direction of the pleural space. This will prevent injuries to the intercostal vessels and nerves, which lie just below the rib. Once you have inserted the needle through the intercostal space, continue to aspirate slightly. When you penetrate the pleural space, air bubbles will appear as you aspirate. Before you remove the needle, note the depth of penetration. You will use the depth as a reference point when you insert the over-the-needle catheter. Connect the over-the-needle catheter to the 10 ml lidocaine syringe, which should be partially filled with the remainder of the local anesthetic. Stabilize the skin with the non-dominant hand and puncture the skin with the catheter using the same landmarks that you used for the local anesthetic. Continue to aspirate with the syringe, slowly progressing in the direction of the pleural space. Again, when the needle penetrates the pleural space, air bubbles will appear in the syringe. At this point, move the needle forward a few millimeters to allow the catheter tip to fully penetrate into the pleural space. The appearance of air bubbles will confirm that the catheter has progressed into the pleural space. Ask the patient to exhale or cough to prevent air from being sucked into the pleural cavity. Remove both the catheter and the 10 ml syringe. Immediately cover the opening of the catheter with your finger to prevent the entry of additional air into the pleural cavity. Attach the tubing with the three-way stopcock to the catheter. Use the 50 or 60 milliliter syringe to gently aspirate the air from the pleural space. Evacuate it through the side port into the ambient air. The correct manipulation of the three-way stopcock is crucial, as the connection of a side port to the ambient air will entrap air in the pleural space and increase the pneumothorax. Numerous models of stopcocks exist, and you should be familiar with those used in your institution. The three white arms of the stopcock used in this video point to an open side port, while the side without an arm points to an obstructed side port with a closed end. When air is being aspirated from the pleural space, the stopcock should be open between the patient and the syringe, but closed to the ambient air. To evacuate the air into the ambient air, you must turn the stopcock so that the syringe is connected with the environment, but not with the patient. Make sure that the pleural space is never connected with the environment while you are turning the stopcock. Measure the volume of the air that is aspirated by counting the number of syringes evacuated. If more than 2.5 litres have been evacuated, the procedure should probably be stopped 
because such a large volume suggests that there is an air leak. Continue manual aspiration until you cannot aspirate any more air. Remove the catheter, put a sterile dressing on the site of insertion, and order a post-procedural chest radiograph to be obtained with the patient in an upright position. When needle aspiration is successful, the patient's symptoms will improve and no pneumothorax or only minimal residual pneumothorax should be visible on the post-procedural chest film. Most patients are ready for discharge approximately six hours after the procedure. If a second post-procedural chest radiograph shows no indication that the pneumothorax has reappeared. The timing of patient discharge will vary according to the institution. Minor complications from needle aspiration of primary spontaneous pneumothorax include localized subcutaneous emphysema. Although serious complications are rare, lung laceration, air embolism, infection or bleeding may occur. You can minimize the risk of bleeding by placing the catheter at the intercostal space just above the third rib, thereby preventing injuries to the intercostal vessels. Technical failure may occur if you cannot reach the pleural space, if the catheter is too short, for instance. This problem most often arises in patients who are very muscular or obese. Aspiration of more than 2.5 litres of air can indicate the presence of a persistent air leak. If this happens, consider the placement of a chest tube. Needle aspiration is an alternative treatment to the placement of a chest tube for patients with a first episode of primary spontaneous pneumothorax. After local anesthesia is administered, the intrapleural air can be evacuated through a large bore venous catheter. The success of the procedure is confirmed by clinical improvement and by a chest film showing no or minimal residual pneumothorax.